Hey guys, this is Rob with another electrical Revit video for your entertainment and pleasure. In this one, we are going to uh, do some more circuiting. This time we will circuit some equipment uh, connections like heaters and such and also motors. So let's get right into it. We're going to open up our tutorial. And let's see. Electrical. And it doesn't like that one because I said open family. Let's go to open model. And that's a good example of uh, you hit the wrong open and you don't get to see anything. So let us open the actual model of our tutorial. And overwrite existing like we normally do. So let this open and we've been through circuiting receptacles and so circuiting pretty much any other equipment or motors is similar. But I just wanted to run through these just to give you an example of what you may encounter. And these type of connections typically are dedicated circuits, as you know. Once in a while, small pieces of equipment, oh, what fire smoke dampers, things like that that are not receptacles, but they're small equipment, could be connected together on a single circuit. So that would be similar to what we did with, rece with receptacles, where you can add and remove them from circuits. But actually, equipment will be a little easier. But equipment has a, a schedule associated with it, so that's different than the receptacles. We covered schedules in previous videos, the equipment schedule when we inserted the equipment but we will kind of review that it's always good to review that and see how that works so let us go to our power plan first floor we've been here a lot we're going to be here again we left off with the receptacle circuit and now we need to circuit up some equipment let us start with the not a motor connection here just an electric heater our eh 1.5 kw is how we tag these and as a review, let us look at the parameters for the, this type. And each piece of equipment that is different, we labeled different types. So this one is the 1.5. It is, we had set it up as a 120 volt single phase connection. It's HVAC load classification. And remember, there's a bunch of different load classifications that you can choose to help. Oh, it helps in load summaries to show the different types of connection, but it also applies the proper demand factor to that piece of equipment. The load 1500 VA. Some schedule things that we already had put in last time. Now, don't let the, 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 the label here confuse you with actual information. To do this schedule, we used built-in parameters that we really don't need, so we kind of repurpose them. For example, we don't need to list a manufacturer of this piece of equipment. That's something the mechanical engineers do. So we use the manufacturer parameter that's already in this family to indicate, in this case, a feeder, you know, a 20-amp two-wire two feeder. Again, type comments we use to indicate whether we want this scheduled or not. If equip is in here, that means it's going to show up on the equipment schedule. If it's blank, it means it won't. We only schedule HVAC and plumbing equipment. We wouldn't schedule things like fire smoke dampers or refrigerators or things like that. So that is where we can schedule it or not. Description we can enter here or in the schedule. Just explains what this EH means. And then our type mark, of course, is used for tagging. So that's a review of what we have here in the variables. And let's look again at the equipment schedule. Down here under schedules and quantities on the left, we have equipment connection schedule. And we could also call that mechanical equipment schedule because that's really what it is. But let us take a look at that. 
we have all of our different heaters. Now we see the 2KW twice. Well, that's because we've inserted it twice in our in our model, and each one will have different panel and circuit information. So that's why it's in here twice. But right now we have a description. We have the electrical data that gets pulled in. Yeah, I think I showed how to do a feeder. We just type this in with text to show, you know, what size wire we're using. And this would relate to your feeder schedule. Our feeder schedule has a two wire feeder as well. More like, more like a branch circuit, not a panel feeder, but it's used the same way. So that's how that works. But we're going to work now on filling in this panel and circuit info. And the way we do that, we can't do it here. But the way we do that is like we did on receptacles back on the plan. So we're going to click on this heater and we're going to use our handy dandy power button to get to the circuiting. And now again, we have our choice of selecting a panel visually by clicking on it or using the drop down. And in this instance, let's let's say that our design decision is to use panel 1B for mechanical equipment. Again, that's a design, design decision, and which is outside the scope of this video. You know, there's many considerations to uh, look into when you're circuiting things. Perhaps with ASHRAE metering requirements, you may want to meter this separately, sub-meter it separately from 1A, so we can have receptacles metered separately from HVAC. So, um, you know, that's a design decision that you'll have to make. But let's say we decided to do that to 1B. So click on that. We already have, oh, we already have it clicked. We already had our power button clicked. If, if you let go of it like I did, you can click back on it and you, you won't see the power button because we already hit it once. But we can modify where it goes. It went to panel none and it got called unnamed. So it actually got circuited, but to nothing. So we want to change that. Let's change it to panel 1B. It's a breaker. And then over on the right, it assigned it to circuit 1 of panel 1B. And it brings in a, a load name, typically the load type or maybe a room number. And we want to make sure we label this with EH, let's give it a capital EH. 1.5 kW, and then let's look at where it is. It's in stair A. Stair A, enter, and then I apply it also, make sure it sticks. 20 amp, sounds right. We can change it later if we need to, and don't worry about the frame or anything else. So that's all we have to do, and that's done. Escape out of there. Now, if we hover over this, and hit tab to get to the circuit, then click it. Here we are. We're into our circuiting information like we were on the receptacles. This is where we could edit the circuit by adding more to this, which we don't want to do in this case. We're going to add some wiring. So hit the arc if you want to use arcs. It will automatically point it to panel 1B. And then as you can see here, like we covered on receptacles, you can play around with this arc and, and how this interacts. You can see that the grip for this arc is above the circle. Well, remember, there, there actually is a disconnect in this symbol that we turned off. So it has a other geometry it's trying to connect to, whether it's turned on or off. So oftentimes we have to fix this grip. So I'm going to move the grip down to the actual circle, and then I'm going to just graphically make it you know, look how I want. And uh, if you pull this grip way down here, it kind of spreads out the wires. If you get it too, too close, it makes them weird. So kind of get it somewhere in the middle to make it look pretty. And that's that. And then we can tag it. Hit the tag by category up top in your quick access toolbar. And then we don't want a leader, so it's unchecked. Drag it over the wire wiring again that's a conduit with wires in it and it says we're at 1b-1 now of course drafting wise we don't want to have to we don't want to be covering up 
a lot of geometry if we can help it. Now if I move this, it moves the tag, but you have to just kind of play back and forth to get this to look right. So something like that. I could also drag it out here where I have more room, but just want to make it readable. So that's simply how you connect this heater. We can look at it in our panel schedule like we did on receptacles, 1B. Here is our EH15 stair A. We just type that in. There's our 20 amp trip. The load automatically gets pulled in. This panel we have not, if you look up here, we have not fixed the main lug only, main circuit breaker issue. So this again where we can say this is a main lug only panel. So we can change the template from the default main circuit breaker to a main lug only template for this panel. Okay, gets rid of the main circuit breaker listing. And then again, here's all of our load information and it puts it in as H HVAC and applies the proper demand factors. Simple as that. And then go back to our schedule, which equipment connection schedule, which we already opened. And now we can see that for our, this electric heater, it now shows it on panel 1B, circuit 1, and that's automatically pulled in. So that's um, handy. It changes, just like in the panel schedule. Think back to, you know, Excel days. If you change the circuit on the plan, you'd have to change it here. You'd have to change it on the panel schedule. Also, that brings up a point that typically, we, if we are scheduling this, the circuit information shows up there on the schedule, equipment schedule, not on the plan. However, because Revit is all interactive or interrelated with the database, we can go ahead and show the home run on here and not worry that it might not match the equipment schedule or the panel schedule. So I just circuit them and show them anyway, if I, as long as I have room. If you're in a crowded boiler room or something like that, it might be difficult to show home runs, but I show home runs on plans now. It, it also is a good reminder as you're going through the project that yes, I have already circuited this piece of equipment. If it's left here with, if you left it without the home run, you might wonder, well, did I circuit that yet or not? You'd have to click on it and check the circuiting. So this is a good visual indication that, yep, I've hooked that up. So I just, I, I include home runs for equipment and motors nowadays on plans. So that's equipment connection. Let's try a, let's try a pump, a motor. I think you'll find a pattern here. Click on the motor. It's a domestic pump. Let's check its information to make sure that we actually included information. You can double check your plumbing or mechanical, whatever design and see if you're current on its load and voltage and phase. You can check all that. So I'm going to say that this is all good. 10 horsepower. I'm all good there. So now I just need to circuit it up. You know, a design, design decision, of course, is do I want to hook this up to a branch panel or to the, to the main you know, distribution board or whatever. So in this case, let's just say I'm going to hook it up to my branch panel and 1B. And yeah, we'll have to, you know, look at the breaker reading for this, looking at charts and things like that, a design decision. So we can fix the rating here. Here again, we want to label this as domestic pump. And I don't think we need to repeat the, the room it's in. It's obviously in the domestic pump room. And even from here, I can arc it and see that attached to the disconnect automatically this time. And let's get this centered so that the wires show up right. Let's tag it. This is going to be a longer tag because it is three phase. Fits right there. That's done. Now, as far as that breaker and stuff, I can go back and fix that later in the equipment schedule. I can do it now. Now, one thing I notice here is this does not show up on our schedule. So this is a good uh, time to double check that we have equipment set up for scheduling, which of course this one is not. So this is a good time to double check that. It looks like when, when I put this in, I had failed to fix the equipment 
parameter. So it, again, these are repurposed, but it's under type comments. You see if I, the drop down, I have an equipment choice, hit apply. Okay. Now, if I go into the equipment connection schedule, now I see my domestic pump is on there. Circuited to 1B357. And then we can now or later eventually add what feeder it is. We can change the breaker in here. Put it right here. We can move, let's say I want to move this over to this side. I can move it like I do with receptacles. You can move things around in the panel. Very simply, it adjusts it here. It changed it there and it changed it in my floor plan. So that's how it works. Go around and connect all your equipment. You can do elevators the same way. You know, special receptacles are larger. Maybe some of these are two pole. Same thing. The range we can get connected. Any of this equipment we can go through and just connect it all up and choose whether or not we want to schedule it. I would not be scheduling this range nor an IT rack connection. I only schedule the uh, HVAC and plumbing equipment. So that is the quick rundown of how to circuit this equipment. And one thing I didn't show, I think, on the uh, last video for the receptacles, and I could show it here, is how to change the panel. I might have hinted about it, but you don't do it at the panel schedule level like you if you want to change circuits you have to do it here at the plan view level so let's say i decided this domestic pump is too big for my branch panel i want to move it to the main distribution board to the mdb well how do i do that well i need to get into the circuit itself not the device i don't just click on the device because i can't change anything here i have to hover over it tab and that's kind of showing me electrical network and then I tab again and it says electrical circuits so that means I can click on it now I'm in the circuiting I've, ta I've um, selected the circuit so now I can't change it here I do it up here simply go up to the drop down or I could select it but drop down go to the main distribution board and it automatically changes it to MDB circuit 1 in the MDB and of course it changes it here MDB 1 in the panel schedule, it's gone. Again, very simple, very powerful. So uh, that's how that works. So that's it for now. Until next time, guys.